Hello, welcome to Election Minute, where my videos are never a minute. Back in 2018, the GOP managed to pick up a net gain of two Senate seats. Though this may sound like good news for the Republicans at first, three out of four of their wins were in states that Trump won by at least 10 points in 2016, while in 2020, they are having to defend two seats that the Democrats have an advantage in and two seats that are close races. The first seat being Cory Gardner's seat in Colorado, who is running against former Governor John Hickenlooper. The next seat the Democrats have an advantage in is Martha McSally's seat in Arizona. McSally failed to win in the 2018 Arizona Senate race against Kirsten Sinema and is only serving as a senator because she was appointed by the governor to fill in McCain's vacant seat. As already stated, Hickenlooper is likely to unseat Cory Gardner, however the Democrats have an equally, if not more, vulnerable seat in Alabama. Back in 2017, there was a special election for the Senate seat formerly held by Jeff Sessions who resigned to serve as Attorney General. Democrat Doug Jones managed to narrowly win the seat due to his opponent Roy Moore being face of sexual assault allegations. Jones will face off against former coach at Auburn University Tommy Tuberville and lose his seat due to how much Trump will likely take the state in 2020. Two states that I personally don't think are likely to flip but are still worth looking into is Steve Daines' seat in Montana and Senate Majority Speaker Mitch McConnell's seat in Kentucky. Daines is running against currently popular Montana Governor Steve Bullock. Though Bullock is leading in polls, it is likely that Trump will carry the state helping Daines in the process. McConnell, on the other hand, will be running against former Marine fighter pilot and failed congressional candidate Amy McGrath. Now, it is not likely for McConnell to lose his re-election bid, especially since he's currently leading in polls and Kentucky has a tendency to re-elect incumbent senators. Moving on, the two close Senate races I would like to mention are North Carolina and Maine. Starting with North Carolina, we have incumbent Senator Tom Tillis, who unseated Kay Hagan back in 2014 during the Republican wave year. One thing to remember is that this seat has not re-elected an incumbent senator since 1996, and that even in a Republican wave year, only went to the GOP by 1.5 points. The second close Senate race to look into is the one in Maine. Susan Collins was considered to be a moderate Republican, but has since stirred up controversy amongst voters in the state of Maine when she voted for Kavanaugh and to acquit President Trump of his impeachment charges. This has not been looking too great for her polling numbers or approval rating. The rest of the Senate races, however, I do believe to be either safe red or safe blue states. Now, some people have mentioned that Texas could possibly go blue this time around, however, I personally don't see that happening. With all this stated, I believe the number one key race in all of this is going to be North Carolina. If we assume that Alabama goes to the GOP and the rest of the states I brought up with the exception of North Carolina goes to the Democrats, that only gives the Democrats 50 Senate seats, which means that in order for them to obtain a majority in the Senate, they will need the presidency. The reason I'm going with North Carolina is because I believe North Carolina will be the closest race, not just in the presidency, but the Senate as well. Yes, Tom Tillis' opponent is leading in polls, however, remember that Kay Hagan was leading in polls as well in similar numbers in November. Now, I was considering making Montana the number one key state, however, let's assume that it does go red and North Carolina goes blue. If Tillis wins in North Carolina, it's likely that Trump has won in the state as well. Voters in Montana tend to be more are willing to vote for a Republican president but a Democrat senator or governor more frequently than North Carolina. Yes, Roy Cooper, a Democrat, was elected in 2016, however that was an extremely close race. With all this said, this is my take on the Senate races I believe everyone should be watching come November, so if you liked it be sure to like, comment, subscribe, if you didn't like it, uh, I don't know, let me know, leave feedback, or whatever. Anyway, uh, election minute, out.